All right, so we're going to start activity 5.2b today, which is introduction to CAD modeling skills. And in this activity, you will need the following things. This is kind of the instruction sheet of what we're building and directions on what to do. Uh, there's a video on how to create the windshield of a T9 truck, which is one of the Autobox cars. So I would encourage you to watch that. And then there's also the dimension drawings for the parts from the T9 truck that we will need in this activity. So when it asks for sizes or it's not given in, in the instructions, I would refer to this sheet for the dimensions. So I'm going to download these and open those up. So this is, again, the directions on what we're going to be building. And this is the dimensions for the pieces of the T9 truck that you will need within this activity. Now. In Inventor, we need to set up a project for this. So I'd, I'd encourage you to create a new folder in your ID folder, which is on the H drive. You should call that folder something like Activity 5.2b or something that's going to remind you, okay, this is where the files need to go. And then we create a new single user project. I called mine 5.2b, and then I directed it back to that folder. And so that's the active project right now. So as I save my files, it will automatically go into that folder. So let's look at the instructions. The first one is asking us to use the fillet tool to take this rectangle and round the edges off. So it's giving you a size of two by one and a quarter for the rectangle. Conveniently, I already have that built here. Uh, but you'll build this first and then use the fillet tool to round off the edges. The fillet is a sketch command, so you have to be in sketch mode to get to it. And I can then specify what size or what radius I want to use. Okay. Once I set the radius, if I click on two lines, it will add the fillet to those or to that corner. Okay. I can keep changing this radius, and it will change the fillet as I add to each of these corners here. When I'm done, and I am done because we have like a before and after, this is what it looked like before, this is the after, what I'd like you to do is to do a print screen of your completed drawing and then add that to a Word document because the Word document is what you will submit, not individual part files. To do that on the keyboard, there's a button in the top right hand corner. It's called Print Screen. If I hit that button, it's going to take a, a picture of my screen. If I go into a Word document, then I can paste that. So Control V will paste that image in there. I want to crop this. I got a lot of extra stuff that I don't necessarily need. So I double clicked on the image. I'm selecting crop and then I can adjust you know what part of the image I see so any excess things like I don't need to see the browser or the ribbon I can go ahead and cut those out I'm happy with that I hit the crop button again and it cuts that out I can also reduce the size of this so that we can fit multiple on a sheet so maybe I'll make this about three inches wide and that way I can fit another drawing right next to this one and this would be the same process for each of the activities or drawings that we will do for 5.2b. Okay. So let's go then to the next set of directions. The next one you will build the body of the truck and to use the dimensions on that sheet. What I want to show you is how to add text and how to emboss that text onto the surface of the truck. Okay. So we've worked for a while. We have the truck completely built. Now I want to add the text and emboss that to the side of this truck. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to select this surface. I can use what's called project geometry to kind of outline what's already part of my sketch so I kind of know the boundaries of where I can place my text. And then I can use the text command to add the text. So let's add T9 to this. If I want to make this larger. I can highlight it, change it to maybe 0.2. You know, maybe I want to make this bold so it sticks out, and I'll hit OK. Notice that the text has been is rotated on its, on its side, which is OK. I can select the text, select Rotate, its center point, and then rotate the text. This can also be moved. Right? If I want to kind of place it in the corner like it shows in the directions, I can move that as well. Once I'm done with placing the actual test, I can finish the sketch. And then I'm going to use the emboss tool, which is underneath sweep, I believe. Yep, emboss. I'm going to select the profile, which is my sketch. I'm going to set how far off of the surface do I want to come out. Maybe we'll do like 0.05. And 
and then we'll add a color as well. I want the surface of my text to be colored, and it can just be black. And hit OK. So if I zoom in, you see that it's taken this text and embossed it, or taken it off the surface, and then added the color to the top of that. Again, when I finish this, I will do a print screen to capture this completed and place it onto my Word document. Okay, the next activity is the introduction of the chamfer tool. And chamfer is very similar to fillet, but instead of rounding an edge, it kind of squares it off. So the edges are straight when I do chamfer. Chamfer is found underneath fillet. Click on chamfer. A couple settings I can use. I can either do a distance, and it just cuts it at that distance. Or I can do a distance and an angle. Okay. I'll set whatever that distance is going to be. Select my edge, and it's going to cut my edge or my corner at that specific distance, and I can apply. Let's try it a different way. Let's do a distance and an angle, and then I can do a surface and an edge, and it cuts it again. So this process can be repeated for each of the corners. And again, when I'm done, Take a print screen of this and place it onto the Word document. The next one on the instruction sheet after we do the windshield and we do that chamfer is the passenger base. And the dimensions needed for this are located here. Most of the other shapes are pretty basic, so I think you can figure that out with the dimensions. The one that's a little bit trickier is the star. And so I want to go over the process of how to create that star. In inventor. So I'm on the passenger base. I've done all the work except for where the star is. And so what I'm going to do is create a sketch to start that process. Using the dimensions, I'm going to first draw a circle that will encompass the entire star. And again, I'm going just off the dimension sheet. That circle is 0.605. Oops. Then I want to place dimensions to locate this circle from the edges of my object because the dimensions are given to locate it from the edges. Right. I'm going to draw a five-sided pentagon to mark kind of the five points of my star. Right. So I want a five-sided pentagon from this same center point, and I'll use this as a reference for the five points of my star. Now using the line command, I'm going to draw my points. Right now I'm not concerned about the size, I'm just making sure that they connect to each of the points of my star. I can go back and use geometric constraints to force it to be exactly where I want it to go. So that one did not go on the edge like I liked, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Add that again. Okay, so I'm kind of not concerned about the dimension, kind of arbitrarily placing these, and then I'll go back and add geometric constraints to force it to be the sizes that I want. Okay, So I'll add one length to the side, and again, these dimensions are on the sheet. I want this to be 0.187. And then I'm going to use the equal constraint to force all the sides of the star to be equal to the 0.187. Okay. So this is going to be equal to this. I want this to be equal to this. And what you'll notice is it'll start shifting the star around as I'm doing this. Once I have them all done, I can finish my sketch. And then I can extrude just the star from the surface. Instead of using add, I'm going to use cut. And the cut feature will cut a hole into my solid object rather than adding onto it. And I can set the distance to all to make sure that it goes all the way through. Once I do that, the last step on this one is to do what's called a shell. And a shell will hollow this out. Shell command is right here. I can set the thickness for my shell. Let's say it's 0.01. And I select the surface, and it's going to cut it out and leave a thickness of point a run on the object. Again, when I'm done, save this, add the print screen to the Word document. Last one that we're going to go over is going to be the circular pattern. I can create a sketch on this surface and add 
again, project geometry to figure out, okay, this is my work surface because it's added the edges. I'm going to add a circle in this top corner here with a diameter of 0.5. I'm going to trim off the part of the circle that I don't need using the trim tool, right? I don't need this outside piece here. I just want what's on the inside, so I can trim that off. And then I can finish the sketch and ex extrude that through. So again, I'm cutting in to the object, so it's hollowed it out. Now, rather than repeating that process five more times on this object, I can use what's called a circular pattern to repeat this feature. So I want this extrusion, the last one I did, to be repeated. I set my rotational axis as the center of the circle, and then the number of times that I want it to be repeated, and hit OK. What it does is repeat that extrusion and that shape along the way, and it makes kind of the rim for my car. When you finish each of the parts of this activity, make sure that they're all placed onto my Word document. You can save this and submit it onto the LMS.